Welcome to the RF Elements Unlicensed Podcast. I'm Caleb. We got Tassus over here. Say hey. hi, Tassus. Hello. And we are back. It's been a little bit. We're going to talk about that here shortly. But before we launch into things, Tassus, give the good people out there their call to action. That's right. Don't forget to like, listen, or subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube or anywhere you download your audio podcasts like Apple, Google, or Spotify. <laughs> All right, y'all. So uh, it's been a minute since we've done a podcast for sure. We've been slacking a little bit, or it seems like we've been slacking a little bit. So uh, really busy summer this summer. Um, you know, work things, personal things, vacation, so on and so forth. So, uh, but we want to get back to you guys, just kind of give you an update as we wrap up the end of the year here. We're going to talk about Wispapalooza. We're going to talk about kind of all the stuff we've got going on in the background, which has been kind of quiet, but uh, big things pop. Big things pop. So, lots going on. For sure, for sure. So, I guess first thing, let's talk about uh, Wispa Palooza. Um, we just yeah. did that about a month or so ago. So, uh, great show, as always. I feel like this year felt like a little more invigorated, I think, than maybe last mm -hmm. year, right? So Definitely, definitely. Uh, a lot of excitement in the year. I mean, you know, a big part of what's been going on is the, the perpetual sort of wait for 6 gig, right? It's like, <laughs> all right, it's coming. Q2, Q3, Q4, spin it around, but supposedly... 2022, 2023, yeah. Uh, maybe now 2024, so... Supposedly sometime in December, right? I'm, you know, right. not quite holding my breath, but it feels way closer than it's ever felt, right? Yeah. And it seems yeah. like the last few gates that the feds are running through are kind of running in parallel instead of serial, right? So, you know, if there's a hiccup in one thing, it's just not going to stop the whole process, so... Now, yeah. if the government shuts down or the FCC um, does FCC things, you know, it could get pushed some more. But it seems like things are real. They're going to be happening soon. And I, th I think that's led a lot of the the energy into the space this year. Um, I think the, the clarification as to where the whole bead thing is going, you know, because it was announced yeah. last year and there was a lot of, I don't know, turmoil or not knowing what's going on. I think the view of things now is a lot closer, right? And we can say, hey, this is a thing and we're going to work through it, but eh, maybe not so gloom and doom as it was before. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely a lot more clarification, I think, is the best way of saying, you know, what's happening with, with everything as far as six gigahertz goes. Yeah, uh, it, it definitely seems we're at the the finish line now, right? Because there were so many questions about, you know, will it or won't it happen? We know that it's pretty much going to happen, right? So that's that's a closed chapter. You know, who's going to support it? You know, we know now that uh, Cambium is, you know, one of the major players. Tirana obviously announced their 6 gigahertz. Uh, I guess Mimosa, you know, has 6 gigahertz. Ubiquity seems like they're out uh, from this this go around, right, as far as equipment goes. So, so it's kind of, it's kind of clear now, you know, who, what, what hardware platforms you'll have for wireless. So you can actually, again, plan because, you know, before all the clarification, everybody's busy thinking, well, am I going to switch to fiber only, right? Am I going to, you know, continue to do this hybrid thing? And if I do, well, who, whose hardware am I going to use, right? So I think a lot of those chapters have been closed now and therefore we can move forward. And then again, with the whole AFC and the FCC thing, now that the AFC is in full testing i think that you know really solidifies it's it's going to happen so now uh again i i don't see it shouldn't take any longer than let's say q1 2024 is my prediction uh as far as the the latest that will happen but uh, it's pretty much right here it's at our door and uh i mean we're we're excited for sure about that stuff for sure for sure so we'll sing the final countdown song or something like that but um... <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, it's hard to make, it's hard to make plans, you know, when, when, when operators are talking about plans for deployment, I mean, this is not a, what am I doing next month? I mean, it comes into it, but it's about six months, one year, three years sort of plan. And when there's so many unknowns, yeah. like, you know, it's like, all right, we'll sit in a hold pattern until we figure out what's going on. And I think most of those gates have cleared and we're ready to start making some progress. So, uh, seeing a ton of demand for the Cambium, you know, six gig stuff. There's a lot yep. of people have been testing it, uh, gears getting in place. Um, people are testing the six gig Toronto stuff. So, you know, everyone's just ready where we can flip that switch and start making some money. So, yeah, 
Um, but yeah, good show. I think there were something like 2,000 people showed up, which was which was really nice. So our energy is good and everything else. Um, it was a good show for us. Um, specifically, we announced uh, a whole new whack of new toys coming up soon. So I guess now's a good place as any to talk about. So I guess really the the first, uh, the biggest attention grabber, I guess, would be the announcement of our 6-gig horn line. Uh, if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So definitely excited about that. Uh, again, it's uh, something that uh, is, you know, currently in uh, the manufacturing stages. So, I mean, a, a lot of what's been going around or happening in the background, specifically with us and this stuff, is that you know uh, we're, you know, we're constantly innovating, right? And what we're doing now, what we've been spending a lot of energy on, is innovating the manufacturing techniques for making horns, right? So, the innovation now that we're bringing to manufacturing of antennas or specifically will really allow us to broaden the range of products that we offer as far as frequencies. Uh, also broadens the range of, you know, manufacturers, right? That contract manufacturers that can make them different parts of the world where they can be made. Uh, so it's not really, you know, a bottleneck down to one way and one place to manufacture these things. So it really helps the industry, not just specifically us and the new technologies. I mean, again, you know, we actually have a concept, you know, for a 2.4 gigahertz horn, which is something people have asked for, right? So again, it's, it's pretty big, right? And it's going to uh, be it, thick <laughs> yeah, yeah. with two so, C's. Yeah. So it's, so it's, it's different. Obviously, but it's it's now possible to again with this innovation in manufacturing that you know we're doing and what we've been working on for over a year now, uh, we are able to you know bring these larger four factor horns and make them cost effective, light you know lighter weight, and uh, again it uh, allows us to go into different areas. I mean you know two point four and LTE are very similar as well, that 2.5 gigahertz uh, spectrum and stuff like that, right? So so there's there's a lot more possibility now uh, for the industry uh, with horn antennas bringing, again, all the, you know, uh, initial innovations we brought with, you know, the absence uh, of suppressed side lobes, you know, good performance, chain-to-chain performance, and all the other things that we do now. So it's tightly controlled and a, a, a lot better than, you know, what it was in the past. For sure, for sure. So now, with innovation uh, comes uh, many adventures uh, oh, and many sure. uh, opportunities to learn. We'll put it that way, right? So Definitely. So we've got on our website, like if you go to rflms.com, you'll see a big banner for 2023 products. And we've got some generalized description and some real basic sex. So full spec sheets on the 6 gig stuff's not quite ready yet um, in the product pages, but that'll be coming out really soon. There's a few tweaks and a few things that we're finalizing, so... You know, we're very confident that it's going to look very similar to what we had at the show, but, you know, as a prototypes. But, um, you know, like I said, the cross the T's and dot the I's. One of the things that we have always been really focused on is making sure that our details are technically correct, accurate, you know, all these sort of things, right? So it's definitely an iterative of process, but all those details should be coming really soon. We've had a lot of interest, a lot of people asking, so just know that it, it is coming and it's coming soon like real soon not just our normal hashtag soon so <laughs> <laughs> not our joking soon real not soon. our joking soon uh, yeah so yeah so you know initially most of the the interest was definitely in the six gig stuff it's been on top of people's heads for a long time um the cbrs horn you know we had that mock-up prototype uh feedback was really good you know very it's good gonna be, it's gonna be sort of a niche product uh for sure. for, you know a connectorized cbrs solution but again we're looking at this because the the manufacturing that we're doing is leads it to be more flexible. So we can approach these sort of niche projects and things like that, which is really fun and interesting. So, um, but the other thing there was a lot of talk about, um, that we're doing now is the, the four by four and the eight by eight horn arrays. Yep. Right. So yep. we very, we pretty much finalized them, uh, details on that super soon. We're about ready to roll with those. So, what we're doing there is we're using the existing for five gig anyways, using the existing five gig horns uh, with some really clever mount setup. So you have single point attachment to the tower or the standoff or whatever you're doing, but you're able to run two horns for a four by four or we're able to run four horns in combination for an eight by eight to support not just um, the upcoming stuff. So 4,500 C, right? That's the eight by eight connectorized AX platform from Cambium. Uh, but you also can use the 3000, right? The existing 3000. We're looking at um, 
you know, just to clean up that that processor. There's a lot of places in the world that are still using the 3000 or be using the 3000 for a time to come, right? So we've got some really cool stuff. Uh, it was really cool to see, like, as soon as you walked into the exhibit hall, Cambium's big booth, you know, had that, that big four horn array right on the first pole. So that's cool to see. Yeah. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, you know, we've been working a lot with Cambium on this stuff. I don't know, Tassos, you want to kind of go into that some more or? Yeah, so I mean, you know, Cambium has been a, a a key ally or partner with RF Elements for quite some time now, right? So uh, you see it in their radio designs for the past few years now, how they uh, take into account uh, the shape of particular radios or connectorized radios that they make to make sure that they work with the original, you know, EPMP 1000 form factor or the original EPMP 2000 form factor. Uh, for their new radio, so that way the same twist board adapters that uh, their customers have been using uh, in the past are still compatible with their platforms moving forward, right? So there's a lot of that happening. Uh, there's also, you know, I think a lot of design, uh, you know, consideration at uh, Cambium, right, for horn arrays, right? Because that's where things are going. You know, they're, they're, there's a lot of companies who are moving forward with, you know, all integrated patch array type, you know, 4x4, 8x8, 16x16, whatever it might be in the future. But Cambium still sees, I think, the value uh, in giving their customers uh, choice, right? And it's really what, what it comes down to, the choice of using other antenna solutions, you know? Um, which is something I, you know, I've always praised Cambium for in listening to their customer base. Their customer base wants to use Horn, so they still build radio platforms that are connectorized that support it in four by four and eight by eight, right? So moving forward, again, these things uh, are, are something that we're, we're we're looking at, and and in conjunction with Cambium, how we can deliver uh, these types of solutions and even other solutions, right? This is just kind of the, the tip of the iceberg for how how to make antennas uh, lighter weight and more flexible. For sure. And, and you know, the size consideration, especially for these multi-horn arrays, is really important because it's, you know, it's the, your EPA, your effective projected area that we publish now. Um, it's your wind load that ties into that, but it's the weight and everything else too. So, you know, I'm not going to say the days of a, a single horn and a single radio are gone by any stretch. I think we're going to see a yeah. ton of that, you know, going on in the future. But, you know, realistically, these more higher end, higher order sort of systems are going to get physically larger and larger over time. And you've got to start taking to look, what's your footprint? What's your attachment method? What's your EPA and wind load and stuff? Because, you know, the more you add to these, the more you've got to think about what your tower engineering is going to be. Right. So, yeah, you know, things are. Things are evolving. So, you know, for us using that lighter sort of footprint uh, definitely helps a lot in those respects for sure. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and how 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 you utilize the platform as well. I think that's one of the thing that, uh, things that excite me the most about Cambium and how they're doing their connectorized array. It's not just about, you know, using, you know, any manufacturer's 4x4 four four or 8x8 eight eight array of, no matter what it is, whether it's patch array or it's horns or dishes, who knows, whatever it is, it's it's also the flexibility that Cambium is putting into these radios to do other things, right? So, you know, eight by eight can be done in what, you know, they call split sector mode, which is something we saw at the 3000, which is really cool where, you know, you can point one horn in one azimuth and another horn in another azimuth, still get multi-user MIMO, right? Uh, but cover larger areas or, or, or whatever in different azimuths with the same radio. The 8x8 radio, the 4500C, I believe it's, is what it's called, right? Which is the 8x8 connectorized. You know, it's going to support uh, uh, a split sector mode, but it's taking it to a whole nother level, right? So not only can you do, let's say, four two by two horns, one north, one south, one east, one way, west, right? Each horn on us a separate pair of chains, but you could also do split four by four, right? So you can do four by four multi-user MIMO in one azimuth with a four by four, right? And another four and another azimuth. So you can kind of do the same thing, or you can do the straight eight by eight where all four antennas are facing the same direction, right? So again, it gives you a lot of possibility uh, to be flexible with your deployments. And, and what's important to me or what I think is important 
is it really depends on the density of your install base, right? So, you know, there are some more expensive platforms out there, right? That you have to put all that money in one azimuth, whether you have one customer there or you have 200 customers there, right? With the, the, the Cambium solution, you could make that really dense. Maybe you only need one radio for all 360 degrees with four horns, right? If it's really dense and you can point all eight in a 90 degree or a 60 degree beam and, and and do that or you can split that radio up into two separate radios and so on and so forth so so it allows you to grow and be flexible this is something I, I really don't think people see this possibility and understand the power of that platform so it's really exciting stuff really exciting stuff for sure for sure because like the flexibility and the tools and the toolbox approach just gives you a lot of different ways to scale totally. the cat right yep. so and, you know, that's really important. I mean, you know, WISPs have always been, you know, amazing at being able to, to use a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. And this, this, the, the tool sets that we're doing here with the new EPMP line is really slick. And it's kind of funny though, cause it's like, why are you, why are they still messing? Or they're asking us for the four by four and stuff. And they're like, why are you guys still fooling with five gig? Five gigs dead. It's not going to be six gig. And it's like, no, not it's even close. not. Why? Not at all. Especially the AX, everything I've seen in testing, the AX stuff really is able to handle the noise way better than anything before, any of the AC stuff or whatever else, right? So, you know, and there's still a tremendous amount of spectrum available in 5 gig if you're doing stuff, if you're making smart decisions, you use those horns and things like that. That'll go along with the 6 gig stuff as well, right? Everyone thinks that 6 gig is going to be this perfect panacea of no noise and stuff. And we know realistically... Yep. Come day one, when it's time to flip the switch, it's going to get noisy pretty quick. Now, I think it's going to be more manageable than six because lower ERPs um, and people uh, are a lot more educated about how to do stuff now versus the last, I don't know, 15 years of doing five gig stuff, right? So, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of advantages and stuff to it, but it's not going to be the land grab. You know, there's no incumbency protection and stuff. There's the AFC basically only exists to keep you from messing with the license links, right? So other than that, it Correct. does not care at all about anyone else in your space. So the cool thing I did see, so Dimitri posted some information uh, in the forums about they were doing some testing to see how many available channels there were. In oh, area. yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so that was always really interesting because everyone was like, well, you know, in rural areas, six gig rules the roost for point to point because of the further distances, less rain fade and stuff. So there's going to be no channels. I was, I'm not going to say super surprised, but I was kind of surprised the amount of availability. Like I think 50, you'd have to look at the post. I forget the exact numbers, but they, they surveyed a whole ton of sites and like half of them had full channel availability, full sizes. And it wasn't, there was a very small percentage where the towers would be kind of hobbled, like where you didn't have much, but they would be like, I don't know, very close to towers that also had full availability. So what yep. this means to me is, you know, it's definitely a consideration with the point to point stuff and channel availability, but there's a ton of channels realistically is going to be available. And, you know, as much as people say, oh, 160 gig channel or you know, 160 meg channel, this is what we're going to do. Like, realistically, that's just too much noise, too much power spectral density loss and things like that. Yeah. Right. So I think really 80s, 40s and 80s are going to be those sweet spots. Uh, and there's a bunch of channels out there. So that was that was refreshing to, to be able to see that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely something uh, that, that I think is the, the next step too. like even with, you know, five gigahertz and the, the last generation of hardware, you know, the radios that were out there were able to go to 80 megahertz and, you know, do 100 megahertz wide channels. But that really, you, you didn't see it much. 40 megahertz was pretty much the king between 20s and, and 40. So here, as we jump to 160 megahertz channels on this next generation of stuff, yeah, I think it's going to be sliced into 80 megahertz channels at most uh, is where you're going to see it. Um, I mean, not only is, you know, 160 megahertz a waste, it's it's difficult to maintain uh, the power requirements, right, uh, to uh, do 160 megahertz channel changes. The SNR requirements go through the roof. The output power goes into the floor. Right, so you're really you're, you're you're fighting yourself to try and maintain that, and then and you throw 4096 qualm on top of that, which is what again everybody's trying to do, or they you know the holy grail of what they want to do for throughput, that puts even more constraint on your ability to to do that, and and at that point, I think it works out to 
like, you know, less than a mile or something like that for your coverage area. If you want to do 4096 QAM at 160 megahertz channels, it's a mile or less, you know, unless you're using huge, huge antennas to, again, build that SNR, you know, might as well do 60 gig at that point, you know, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, that, that you know, 36 dB MERP is not... You know, not it's bad. a little bit hobble. It's not terrible either, right? right so right. It's, you know, it's better than DFS, lower than what you could do in the upper, you know, the Uni three or whatever. But you know, again, tools on the toolbox, right? Ooh. And you know, some of these Absolutely. connections, even the shorter connections. You know, we've seen people probably doing shots I wouldn't recommend, but you know, kind of raggedy with front for all inclusions or like shooting through some a little bit of foliage stuff. But works on five gig, but you can't get away with with sixty. So yeah. But so that's kind of that. I mean, there's a lot of tools in the toolbox. There's been some refreshing. Everyone's like, you know, the market's so stale, blah, blah, blah. And it's not moving. But I think what we've seen recently, especially over the last six months, is a lot of refinement of things too, right? So not just us or our particular space, but I mean, well, first of all, 60 gig, you know, we've got some new players in the field. Um, yeah, we got Tachyaz out there doing their thing. The Ubiquity Wave stuff, you know, they've announced some new models. I mean, that's ripping. Some good stuff. Yeah, it's doing really well, right? So, and it fits where it is. Um, Cambium and Ubiquity both have 10 gig G-Pon now, which, yep. you know, and they're taking different approaches how they do it, like they always have. Um, you know, there's some really cool tools there to tie in into your existing eco or ecosystem network structures and stuff. And again, be able to supplement the areas that you're doing, right? So... You know, there's a lot of areas where it makes sense. There's a lot of areas where it doesn't. And, you know, people people will tend to say, well, this is the only way to do this and forget that uh, the world is the country or the state or the town could be completely different. You know, network to network, operator to operator, tower to tower, right? So, right. you know, there's been a lot of those refinements and things I think is really exciting. So, you know, this, uh, you know, there's been a lot of craziness going on the last year or two, especially, but, you know, things for 24 look really exciting. Um, you know, things with funding, competition and stuff is ramping up. People are looking at new approaches to see how they attack. Um, NTIA finally said, hey, GAA, CBRS is considered reliable service. Like they officially came out and say it. So that means that unless if you're doing 100 by 20, then that means you can't get overbuilt with bead money, which is huge for a lot of people. So definitely, definitely. That's exciting to see. Yeah, there's. Finally, right? Like, it was kind of hinted around, but you know how the government is. Like, you can't just yeah. believe a hint, because they'll be like, next day is like, mm, nah. So, yeah, the fact that they put that down was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I wish they would refine some of those rules as well, because, you know, you know, I think, and I could be wrong here, I'm not a, 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 a funding or government, uh, you know, expert here on how these things work, but, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, a, a lot of the deployments that we're seeing are, really a CYA, right? So they're deploying CBRS to to say we can provide 100 by whatever, you know, in these particular areas. That way they nobody else will get funding to overbuild them, but they're not really providing all that service out there. So it's more of like a coverage area protection than, than anything else, right? So we'll, we'll see how that works out. Yeah, I think it'll work out uh, pretty well in the end. Now that they know yeah. that they can rely on it, they're going to be willing to actually build out those networks because they know they're not going to be sure, ever built. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. So a lot of different ways to skin that cat. There's been, there's actually been some progress in some areas at least about you know actually saying, hey, wireless is an option. You know, in the beginning it was mainly a fiber push, right? And I think there's a lot of not necessarily. Um, federal government but a lot of the the smaller governments are like look man like we know that this is going to be you know uh, uh a show so there's there's a lot of areas especially rural areas people don't understand what it takes to get bandwidth to an area that are saying hey you know wireless is a thing i think ohio's a lot of made a lot of traction I've seen some stuff in michigan lately so that's really yeah. good it's really reassuring that you know and again more of the hey this bead thing's not the end of the world for the WIS space it's actually opening up a lot of different potentials and opportunities and stuff like that yeah it's and it's still something that gets me so frustrated you know because this whole fiber thing you know fiber 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 everywhere and and, and i agree i mean fiber's fantastic right but you know this is really about using taxpayer dollars in a smart way to get internet to everybody now, not in the future. They need it now. I mean, and 
you know, nobody really talks about like, you know, the some of the the fastest growth this industry had for adding subscribers was during COVID, right? There was a race. Everybody had to work from home. Everybody had to have internet. And how did everybody get internet back there? With wireless. It was reliable. People were working from home, right? People were uh, going to school from home, doing all these streaming audio video things, things that are very important to be reliable. It was all achieved with fixed wireless, right? So, I mean, the fact that, you know, uh, the legislators out there want to say that fiber is the only thing that's reliable, that six gigahertz can't be considered reliable because it's whatever, uh, is just absolutely stupid, right? And it really, it, obviously you can tell it pisses me off because again, we were able to do it without government funding, right? By, you know, pulling up our bootstraps, going out there and building these networks and, uh, and everything was fantastic. But yeah, you know, nobody really talks about how that was achieved, you know, back then. So I don't know. Well, you know how legislators are. They're like, oh, what can you do for me now? Oh, Mr. Bribe Man with the bribe. I mean, not bribe money. It's uh, campaign <laughs> yeah. contributions and stuff like that. I guess you put it in a different colored envelope or you put a seal on Maybe. it and it's totally legal, yeah. right? So, yeah, I don't know. Right. Uh, there's still there's areas where, where we're making some progress there, right? Which is which is refreshing Definitely. here because the more that snowballs, you know, the the more that the rural folks are like, hey, we have an opportunity to boost our economic base by actually getting operators out here and deploying, you know, the yep. more they look into that, especially as the the country as a whole is shifting, you know, it'll always be sort of urban centric, but there's a lot of places and a lot of people that are like, look, we're tired of the, the urban or, you know, super tight suburban lifestyle. We want to spread out a little bit more because there's a whole lot of space out there. So, yeah, definitely, definitely. All I'm going to say is that WISPs, WISPs saved America during COVID and getting everybody online, man. And that's something that every WISP operator out there, whether you have 100 subscribers on your network or you have 10,000 subscribers on your network, you should be proud of yourselves for, for achieving that with your own money in a quick amount of time and keeping America working, man. So God bless all of you, man. 100%. 100%. So um, let's see. What else do we want to cover? Um, try not to get into our normal sort of ranting, uh, rambling rabbit trails and stuff like that. So, you know, that's the bulk. Again, we've been, you know, working on so much stuff in the background. We've not been super vocal. We've not been throwing a lot of content up. We've not been bantering as much and stuff like that. But, yeah. um, you know, we just want to say, look, man, we've been busy. There's really big things coming and we're really looking forward to next year. Um, it's going to be really exciting stuff. Yeah. The, I mean, the market's just been evolving and you have to evolve with it. So that's that's changed on, on, on many fronts, right? Not just about the technology, but how you run your business. I mean, the, we can see the distribution channel is, is changing dramatically right now as well, right? Um, and then there's, again, uh, the products. I mean, what we didn't talk about, and actually we didn't have <clears throat> at Wisp of Palooza, but it's in our new product sheet is now larger dishes, right? So people have been asking us, uh, for some time to go beyond the 27 dBi gain that we have for our current Ultra Dish, right? So again, we have a 30 dBi version that's uh, coming out. Um, we have designs, obviously, for higher gain beyond that. Uh, I think a 32, 33 dBi, and so on and so forth, right? So we're definitely uh, again pushing, uh, you know, the the manufacturing and and how we make antennas on the parabolic dish side because I think that's something that's you know, again, different about our antennas versus other antennas that are out there. And we, we bring that same kind of, uh, you know, philosophy on, you know, what's important for an antenna as far as the parameters go. It's not just about having the highest gain. It's about having flat gain across the entire spectrum that it operates in. It's about having good VSWR across the entire spectrum. It's about having, again, balanced beams, right? You got to make sure that the vertical a beam shape matches the horizontal beam shape as close as possible. So that way you get good chain to chain performance. You get good and stable modulation rates. So again, we're, we're bringing that uh, again, you know, to the forefront of dish technology and now we're expanding the gain there as well. So that's something that's really exciting. And it's something that the industry is really going to need because again, these uh, wider channels, at these higher 4096 uh, and even 1024 modulation rates will require more gain on the AP and even CPE side of things 
in order to uh, deliver deliver that bandwidth. So that's pretty exciting too. Finally, one hundred percent. So uh, the mechanic side of that plays into it as well. You know how you hang it, how you aim yeah. it, and stuff like that. Like you know, we've all we've all done cheap dishes and just it's a complete fuss. And especially on the CPE side of things, where you know you were so tied into being able to turn over in time, right? So you got to be able to quick, you got to be able to move, which is super important. So yeah, yeah. So that's that's something that's that's important and still, uh, you know, still something that we always have to look into is uh, like you said, the user experience is how I like to call it of how it installs, right? Uh, making sure it's as easy as possible with as uh, little, uh, you know, fuss and uh, the amount of tools, screws, nuts, bolts, washers, and everything that are required to, to do that. So that's all still there. Yeah. Uh, it comes from 10 years of making stuff and screwing up plenty, right? Screwing so. up? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> shit. We made, I mean, you know, we've always been vocal. We've, we've never, you know, suppressed that information. We've actually all always called for it to come out because that's the way you make it better. But man, we've made a lot of mistakes along the way, right? And, and some of the designs, we thought this was a great idea. We put it out there and, you know, you let the user base break it, right? And they show you how to make it better. And, and you know, we, we constantly do that. So I think we're at a point now where our design is pretty dang solid, you know, so. Cool stuff. Well, I think that's really about all I've got to cover right now. Um, anything else on top of your, your list? No, I mean, uh, again, you know, it's, 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 we're coming into winter time, right? So, you know, it's kind of sad because it seems like, you know, the, the, the wireless side of the market has been kind of picking up, right? But I think it's about to slow down again because it's winter, right? So a lot of people aren't going to be deploying a lot uh, you know, when it's snowing out and it's cold out and ice and all the other stuff. So that's kind of sad, but you know, Hey, the holidays are upon us. So Titan Fest, right. Is, oh, yeah. uh, you know, a few weeks away. Uh, Thanksgiving is what next week, right? Jesus happening. So depends on when we right. publish this, right? So yeah, exactly. There might yeah, be a exactly. little, little timey, wimey things at play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so again, you know, the, the holidays are upon us. Uh, Titan Fest is, uh, right around the corner here too. I think, uh, you know, uh, so Christmas, New Year's, man, it's just, I I'm ready for 2024 to, to be here to happen and to really start uh, moving forward, uh, you know, with the next, next step, right. In wireless. For sure. For sure. So this will probably be the last podcast for the year. Just letting everyone know. Um, so we'll get them cranked right back up again right after New Year's. Uh, we're looking for guests. You know, as much as, as Toss and I can sit here and wax poetically to ourselves and listen to our own voices, what we found is really the most uh, useful sort of engaging conversation and more useful to, to people out there listening uh, are the guests. Because, you know, we look at back at all the lists we talked to, you know, the last 30 some odd episodes or whatever. We had a lot of guests and, you know, everyone's got their own different approach. Everyone's got their own different way of doing things and... You know, sometimes mostly we agree, sometimes we don't, but that's where the, the fun part of this conversation comes from. So, you know, if you're looking, hey, if you're interested, you want to talk about your WISP or your fiber ISP or your combination or what you've learned, you know, all these things that might be interested, reach out to me or Tassos. Um, and hey, we'll set something up because, you know, the, the guest, the guest versions of these are super informative and it's something that we want to focus a lot on next year. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and beyond that as well, you know, we're actually looking for beta testers and for customer feedback is something we always want. So if any of the products we talked about, and we'll be talking about them more here in the uh, coming months, but if anybody's interested in any of the new products, you know, go to our website, rfelements.com. And on the front page, you'll see new products, uh, basically a new product announcement at the bottom of that page. You'll see a link there to sign up for beta testing of you know, all our new products, whether it's six gigahertz horns, CBRS horns, the new dishes we talk about, four by four and eight by eight arrays. So all this stuff is on the table. Go to our website and uh, sign up for a beta tester thing. Give us some, tell us some information about a deployment, something that you want to test. And if it's a good fit for one of these new products, you know, we'll, we'll get you a sample sent out and, uh, you know, get, get some testing going. For sure. For sure. You can also go to the contact page, fill out a ticket there. You can, Email toss us now directly. What are, what's, our, what's our normal sort of sign out group? How do they find us? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. a little, little rusty, a little rusty. You can find us anywhere on social media, right? So all over Facebook and the main WISP groups, uh, you can find us on our website, rfelements.com, in our forum, rfelab.com, or you can email Caleb or myself, tossos at rfelements.com or Caleb at rfelements.com. We're not difficult to find and we're very easy to uh, get a hold of, so. For sure, for sure. So 
All right, well, that's going to wrap it up, everybody. Uh, we hope you have a, a great end of 2023. Uh, happy holidays and all that. Hope that your 24 takes off, and we will be talking to you guys then. Absolutely. See you guys in 2024. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.